So carrying on from a previous presentation, we're looking at feeding the switch. I've isolated this circuit, I've secured isolation and I've locked it off. I've used my proving unit and I've proved the circuit is dead. I've also seen the lights in the area go off. Okay, so I've done all those stages and now we're gonna actually just look at the connections within this two gang light switch. Both switches are being used as one way switches for the main lights in the kitchen and also some under permit lighting, but the feed has been taken into here. Um, the feed has also been taken off to another switching point. Also, the feed has been taken to a five amp socket outlet to feed a TV, believe it or not, as well. So we'll have a look at the connections that have been made within this two gang light switch, reiterating the points that we brought up in our previous video presentation. So moving on from our previous presentation, uh, talking about feeds to light switches. So we've got one here with a feed down to a light switch. However, there's a little bit more going on than that. The two switches are operating currently as one way switches, doing the main spotlights in the kitchen and some under permit lighting. However, there is also a feed coming out of here, going to feed a five amp socket outlet and plug top for a TV. And there's also, they've used a three core, which I would suggest was probably two way in the main lights in the room. They've actually taken that three core out and used it as a feed to feed the other switch and then changed that switch to a one way outside lighting switch. So let's see what's going on first of all on the back of the switch itself. So as I turn it over, we've got a lot going on. It looks more complicated than it is. The top section here, which is uh, the common terminations, has got the feed coming in. So this one here potentially is the feed coming in. And then that's looped across to this side to bring the feed across to this side. You've got switching line coming out here, say for the main lights in the kitchen, and switching line coming out here for the pelmet lighting. The other ones here, we've got a 1.5, which goes off to feed a five amp socket outlet for a TV. And we've also got the brown of the three core which is now used as a permanent line going across to the other switch, which is now being used as a feed. So we've got feed in, feed looped across, feed out to a TV, and a three core feed across to the other light switch point, but not as two way, just to take a permanent feed across. And we've got two switching conductors independently for the spotlights and the pelmet lights. We've got a set of neutrals, set of CPCs and a spare conductor of the three core not being used and they're all in maintenance free connections as we can see here. So let's have a look at those next. So looking at our neutrals then, we've got two neutrals that must go up to one for the kitchen lights and one for the under permit lights within the kitchen. So we've got two neutrals going out there, so the switching line and neutral going to those. We've got a neutral that goes to the TV socket outlet, which is a five amp socket outlet. We've got a neutral coming in, and we've also got a gray conductor of the three core being identified with blue sleeving to take the neutral to the other switching position. So it's taken over a permanent line and a neutral to the other position, and the black conductor of the three core is now not being used as it's just taking the feed to the other switch. So that's become a one-way switch for an outside lighting. And all the CPCs have been connected together here. Just to recap then, the feed comes into the switch and is terminated in this case into the common. The permanent feed is looped across to the other common, of which there are two switching lines coming out, one for the independent lights for the spotlights, one for the permit lights. We've picked up from the same position here a permanent line to a 5 amp socket outlet for a TV and a permanent line that goes across in a three core cable to feed another switch. We've got all the neutrals connected together and this gray one here is a neutral and been identified with a neutral because it's gone across in the three core. The black conductor no longer being used and he's identified it previously as a switching line conductor but now he's doing nothing. And we've got all the CPCs connected together here. So we've taken the feed into a switch, been quite clever. We've fed also a socket outlet of five amps and we've also taken the three core that was originally for two way across to another lighting point in order to take a feed there. And that lighting point is now a one way switch. So this is the other switch in the kitchen, which has now had the three core brought to it, but not to two way it, but just to bring a feed across. So let's have a look in the back here. So what we've got then is the top connection here in the common is the brown of the three core bringing in our feed. We have a twin and CPC going out to an outside light. So this is the switching line conductor. Previously saw that gray was used with blue sleeving on for the neutral. So that brings our neutral in goes out on the blue neutral to the outside light. And once again, the black conductor, which would have been a switching line on a three core, is actually redundant and doing nothing. So we've used a three core to bring across the feed to this switch 
and this switch now is a one-way switch for an outside light and not originally as it was a two-way for the main lights in the kitchen clever way of using the three core if you didn't need it as a two-way switch i hope this has been some help